In a studio that's in a basement comes the epic story of how two friends change the future of the movie podcast game forever. The reviews are in. Boys Life Magazine gives the High Psy Podcast four and a half acorns. The Daily Bugle says, these guys are super legit. And Pope Francis declares the podcast as life affirming. From the kid who tried to get smart with David Spade and got fucking old. You're still out. You're still back. And the guy who can name all four Baldwin brothers. Alec, William, Daniel, and the baby boy, Stephen. Live from the studio of his parents' basement. The Have You Seen It Podcast. Welcome back to the Have You Seen It Podcast. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause. Cash, Cash. Cash, Cass. Whatever. Call you know, me whatever works. you want. <laughs> yeah, I will call I'm you. I'm easy. How about Mr. Krause? Does would, that work better? I would prefer, I actually prefer you call me by my middle name, Alan. For Alan, now on. yeah, okay. Just Alan. Alan. All right. Let's confuse the hell out of the <laughs> yeah. listeners. No, Alan's a horrible name. Oh, wow. It's a horrible name. What, what about all the Allens listening They're to so mundane, that it, it those fucking little, Allens. Yeah. Okay. Except for Paul Allen. That was his last name, though. It was his last name. He kind of got away with one. He did, for sure. <laughs> and he owned the Blazers, so yeah. uh, we let that guy slide. We did. But any other Allen? No, not, not my cup of tea. Mason, what are we doing today? Well, this is our TV Tuesday, and uh, we are uh, reviewing the second part. Part dose. Yeah, part two. Episodes five through seven of I Am Not Okay With This. Yes, and I am very okay with this show. As am I, and I'm very excited. The soundtrack of this series fucking kicks. It rocks. It's awesome, man. You can go back and watch it and listen to it on Spotify or anything. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Listen to the whole thing, but yeah, I love it. Blood Witch kicks some ass. Well, Blood Witch (laughs) I I was unfamiliar with, but but they have a lot, like the Kinks, and they they have a bunch of famous fucking, uh, the Pixies were in the last episode. Oh, yeah. Awesome. But yeah, man, I really, really enjoy this series. Definitely. So do I. And uh, it's, it's something, in my opinion, very unique, because most shows like this would take 45 minutes to an hour per epi- episode. This show could have been way longer. Yeah. That's what I was thinking, too. It could have been way, but I'm fine with that. Yeah, but I mean, for what we saw during this whole season, I was like, wow. It just left me yeah. wanting more exactly, and hoping yeah. that they will do like 35, 40 minute episodes next season. Man, I haven't, yeah, I, I haven't heard anything if they're going to uh, do season two or anything yet. Yeah, I don't know about that. This yet. thing could not have been that expensive to make. No, of course not, especially 18 minute episodes. Yeah, I mean, well, one of them is 19 minutes. That's right. the shortest one. But they but go up about to 25. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They I think one goes up to 28 minutes or something. Yeah, maybe 29 yeah. minutes. Yeah, a running time between 19 to 28 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but one of them is really fucking short. Yeah, super short. <laughs> like, you think, like... I was like, that episode's over? You almost for Yeah, if you're not paying attention, it'll just go to the next episode. You'll think it's one long episode. It's <laughs> yeah. very confusing. But, uh, yeah, I like... I love the comedy. is really, really funny in this. And uh, the second half is crazy. It is crazy. It, it is super crazy. In the most metal fucking awesome way that you could possibly oh, sure. end a show. Yep. But uh, let's get into it. Yeah, let's jump into this. We only have three episodes left. We do. We did one through four last mm-hmm. time. Now we're doing uh, five through seven. Right. And this is titled something that I always say when we're in the studio. This is just, just another, another day you always say in that. paradise. You're real Jimmy Buffett of this I, duo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. But uh, yeah, another day in paradise. And this is, we already kind of got into this one in the last episode. We did. We, we kind of uh, shit the bed a little bit. But uh, it's the... Yeah, it's the Breakfast Club episode. Yep. Breakfast Club slash heist episode, because they get into a little heist in this one. Ah, they And they did. shoot it like a heist movie mm-hmm. where they shoot the ending and then reverse. It's kind of cool. You it know? was kind of cool. Yeah, I liked it. Kind of Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven style. You get those, uh, yeah, those vibes, definitely. Oh, for sure. But uh, yeah, so they're all given detention, we remember. Already talked about that. Given detention mm-hmm. uh, for a number of reasons. Sydney. Uh, steps up for her friend. Yep, Dina, because Brad cheated off her paper, and then Sydney was having none of that, told off the teacher, called him an idiot, Yeah, cursed at him a few times. And this is where um, Stanley comes into play, because remember, they got in a fight a little before that. We're kind of on rocky terms. And uh, he comes in, pushes his... Pushes all yep. that shit off his desk. Says, gives up, throws a motherfuck out. Motherfuck That's out. an automatic. It is an detention. automatic detention. Back in my, I don't <laughs> Send know. Send your ass to the <laughs> yeah. principal's office, kid. 
go tell the principal what you just told me. You're gone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and uh, they all get sent attention, plus yep. the designated badass chick. Jenny. Yeah. yeah. Who she's smoking in the teacher's lands, probably right. hooking up with some teachers as well. Probably. She's a wild girl. She's a wild girl, yeah. And uh, hooking up with Brad, too. Hooking up with Brad. Whoa. And that is what... Uh, that's what Sydney finds out. Yes. Over because she overheard uh whatever the mean chick's name talking to Brad. Jenny. Jenny. Yep. Exactly. And uh yes, yeah, she overhears and she tells Dina. She does. Just straight up doesn't even wait at all. Yeah. I, I like the I scene. I like the scene yeah. too, yeah. So wait, like, wait one second. And she just goes, Yeah, that's a good friend. You gotta do it. You have to. I mean, how do you not? It's hard. It's hard to do. Because yeah. Dina was pissed. Right, but I mean, Sydney didn't even like Brad to begin with, and that little weasel comes up to her and he's like, "Oh, let's make a truce." Yeah, like, and I like this Brad character. It's easy to overdo it with these uh, bullies mm-hmm. for sure, but uh, I like this Brad character. You know, he's he's dark, but he's not overly dark. It seems very realistic of of a high school bully, right? Yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, she tells him. But before that, they had to steal security footage because on. Caught on camera was Sydney blowing down the entire library in one of her yes. psychic blasts because yep. she thought she was being followed. Another scene that was really funny there is Dina then because they have to ask Dina to help and oh and uh, hilarious. Stanley doesn't know what to say and oh, Sydney I'm goes yeah okay, go like no go on oh, okay. it's a different part go ahead. and uh, Sydney goes uh. Yeah, me and Stanley were had sex in the library. That's why we have to yep. grab this footage. He goes, yeah, is with 69 and everything. <laughs> the, that line was in hilarious because it was just so awkward. The part I thought you were talking about was when uh, Dina has to go and like flirt with the janitor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like some old school. And he's just like, He's like, wait one second. He's like, I'm offended. He's like, for one, I'm, I'm married gay. and yeah. I'm gay. And gay. <laughs> and he's like, this is just disrespectful to me and yourself. And he just kind of like breaks her down. Yeah. And she's like, oh, yeah. Like she thought it was going to work like a movie. Exactly. Right. Yep. He would be some pervy janitor. But the guy's just a straight up super cool right. guy. He's like, just take my keys. Like, Next time, here. ask. Yeah, just okay? ask. <laughs> he's like, he was so offended yeah, by he it. he was. You just don't have to go through all this. First off, I'm married. And I'm gay. So funny. But, uh, yeah, so they had still, which ended up being not that difficult to take the the keys. Not I mean, he literally did. handed them over. The plan was way more elaborate with the yes. bean burrito and all mm-hmm. that. And then the, the principal, Pretty funny. who the hell's eating yeah. burritos? <laughs> Pretty funny idea, though, to just put that thing on blast yeah. until they explode in the microwave. That's not something you want to clean up. That guy never, uh, yeah, what does he say about the principal? He's like, uh, he's always willing to use a fire extinguisher. He's like, he won't say no to a fire extinguisher. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so they do it. They end up stealing uh, the footage. Yep. But uh, this, the big thing of this is Sydney thinks she's kind of going crazy because seeing that guy. Because she saw a guy in the library or, or like a shadow figure. Yep. She didn't know what exactly it was. Yep. Uh, and they end up reviewing that tape. Exactly. And yeah. Dina's not seeing the guy that she's seeing. She goes, what about that movement there? No, it's Stan. Or Stanley. Stan, yeah, yeah, Stanley. Not Dean. I'm sorry. Stanley. And Stan, and he says something important, though. He goes, it just looks like your shadow. Yeah. I think this is what that bad guy's going to be. He's just like mm-hmm. a shadow the, person. The, the negative person of whatever she is. You know, yep. he's the bad. But yeah, pretty much that's how it ends is Sydney kind of thinking she's crazy because Stan can't see anything. Yep. Well, no one, really, the video doesn't show anything. No. I did like that scene, though, with Sydney when she is in the library and the lights start to flicker a lot. Oh, yeah. And as she's walking through the bookshelves. Well, we know for sure that someone's there. Oh, for sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we see him. It yeah. shows him multiple times. But uh, she thinks she's going a little crazy about she it. She does. Yeah. So that's episode five, right? Yep. Episode six, like father, like daughter. This is a really nice episode. It's nice it before things just straight up hit shit hit the fan. Yeah, you it's could say It's a little that. breather because yep. things get wild. But, uh, but yeah, like we said, they look through the security footage and they don't see anything. Mm-hmm. Brad is fucking livid at this point he might be drinking at lunch maybe he's looking a little drunk sometimes uh he <laughs> is very, fucking like, sway. he is mad because he's yeah. like uh he's he confronts sydney remember he does in the locker yep like he's gonna hit her <laughs> <laughs> we gonna beat the shit ever brad which yeah that was weird brad uh, that that was a, a very aggressive oh yeah thing for like a, a high school boy to do to a girl like get in her face like that because it did look like he was gonna like physically oh hurt yeah her. 
Like, but that's something relax. I do. They do very well. It's like I mean, you know, a high schoolers, my everyone in fucking high school, their fucking emotions and their chemicals mm-hmm. and everything right. is at the breaking point. And every so breakup's kids, the end of the world. So in high school, you'll see the the crazy shit of all time. Yes. People will do the crazy shit that you'll never see outside of unless it's like a drug or something. Just from or just because of emotions, just because well, of the and, fucking chemical imbalance yes. going on inside of us. And kids don't have perspective. They haven't been outside yeah. the real world. They yeah. don't understand like relationships. So so you'll see like just happens, some. Wild shit yeah, in high school. Wild. Where, <laughs> yeah. Where you thinking, man, I'll never see. Just some, just random shit. Do you ever remember the kid in our school who would run full blast and like double kick the door after lunch? Did you ever Which see that? Which is just so weird. Just so, every day. Yeah. So just full sprint, double kick, slam the door. <laughs> Why? And everyone just said, that's everyone just him. Just, that's who he is. That's Door kicker kid. We don't even know his name. We still don't know his name to this day. But do not be on the other side of that fucking door when you see him full sprint across across the fucking quad. (laughs) Anyways, weird shit happens. But yeah. But uh, during this confrontation, she opens up all the lockers with her mind. Mm -hmm. Brad thinks nothing of this. Nothing. It's just an afterthought. He's like, oh, that weird shit's already happening. I can't think of this right now. There's no way. Not a good multitasker. Let's put it that way. If he's if he's no, uh, very yeah. focused on Sydney, that's the only thing he can for sure uh, process for sure. But uh, but yeah, and uh, and Liam in this episode also gets punched, gets payback from her because even one because we didn't talk about early, but she stood up to Liam, her brother's uh, bully. Yeah, which yeah, he, because they were walking home that one day. Little ver- word of advice: take the beating. Don't let your sister ever ever stand, stand up for you because you're gonna get it. Ten times worse than you would get it right there, because how it's just embarrassing. It's embarrassing, and, and even, even older sisters most older sisters know that. Of course, like let let your brother ke- catch the beating. Yep, it's it's much easier right here, right now, because he again he gets it worse in school. He does. The kid just fucking wax him, just fucking <laughs> wax him right in the face. Mary just comes right up to him uh-huh. and they're staring at each other, and you just at hear the this, water fountain. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, water fountain. That's where all the shit goes down. It does. Water fountain. You never want to be standing around a water <laughs> fountain. If there's a fight going to break out, it's going to break out of the water fountain. But uh, but yeah. So Liam is pissed at uh Sydney. Yes. For, uh, when I mean, he just he, he calls her out. I mean, because she's being an asshole, not just to him. She she didn't think about him whatsoever when she stood up to the bully. It was oh, just yeah. more about her and getting her anger and frustration out. Yeah. And then she's doing the same thing with her mother as well. And so Liam just lays into her. He's like, yeah, you got to change. You're being a, you're being a brat. Yeah, you know? and Liam is hilarious. I mean, it's it's funny and sad because he's obviously thinks he's like the dad character in this mm-hmm. family, you he know, does. with women and when I, and we yeah. get that. It's really funny scene during the prom when they come. We'll talk about it. Yeah, later. it's <laughs> yeah, hilarious that, though. What he says. he's like the dad's like a smoking jacket. Yeah, yeah. he's doing a puzzle. It's so yeah. funny. He's like, be home by eight. She's Be, like, it's, it's seven forty five. Yeah, and he just. But uh, yeah, so uh, oh, and again. Uh, uh, Stanley ends up asking uh, Sydney again to the fucking homecoming, and she just says, "Look, it's not gonna happen." Stanley's yeah. like, "Fuck it, I'll go ask someone else." And man, and this like guy's it. turnaround game quick, quick. Next table over, boom, homecoming. <laughs> you, me, <laughs> done. Me, let's do it. Let's. Uh, the girl was just, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a little overwhelmed at this yeah. point. I don't know what homecoming to say. is. Literally in two hours, a little <laughs> early, but yeah, I think I had to pull it off, and she does. She pulls uh, it off. But yeah, that's pretty much it for her, uh, Sydney and Stan. Yep. That was a big fucking. Well, that was a big fight too, because like uh, she was like, "Good, I hope you do. I want you to go find someone else." And Stan yeah. at that point was the angriest I've seen him in the show. Well, she was thinking, "There's no way Stan's gonna find someone else." Oh, this guy's course. a fucking nope. This guy's fucking smooth. Oh, he's slinging it, smooth as hell. <laughs> yeah, he is. Well, they know they got. He's got that hash. <laughs> he always <laughs> wanted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, so Sydney, she's really, really in a fucking dark place. She goes and talks to her counselor again, and uh, and tells the counselor about the guy that she's seeing. Yes. And the counselor says something, kind of makes her feel better. She says, uh, you're still grieving. Yeah, and it's a process crazy, of grieving. It's a year of, yeah, and, and maybe you're seeing uh, your father. Yep. You know, and Sydney's starting to think, okay, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's true or whatever. Yeah. But she goes home, and she uh, she goes to the, the basement. She does. This basement's, like, uh, off limits, because that's where her dad used to hang out and, you know, smoke that chronic. Well, and that's also where they found him hung. Hung. So yeah. no one really no likes, one likes going to go in to the there. Basement. No. no. But she goes down there, upset, and she finds, um, like, an ammo box. Yep. Because and- at this point, she just wanted answers. She wanted to go down there and, and figure out 
Yeah, why yeah. he left. Why he left. After and why no, there yeah. was no note or anything. Turns out she knew nothing. She didn't even know that she was in the military. Crazy. And thinking military, I'm thinking already experiments, military experiments, mm-hmm. right? Yep. They are for sure got something. Because the way, the way they play, you know, the mom comes down, and the, it's very sad moment. She's like, Sydney, what are you doing? Uh, and then it's crying immediately. You know, it's very emotional. Because she's got his dog takes out. Yep. But the mom explains that her dad went over there and saw crazy things that he couldn't come back and talk about. Really, you're just thinking PTSD. Right? For and, sure. And for now, that is all we know of is yeah. PTSD. And it's not something darker, more nefarious. No. I really did enjoy this scene, though, and I really enjoy the acting, but also the character development of both the mother and the daughter in this. Yeah. Because it was finally at a, at a, well, at a point where they had a healthy talk for once, about for the once, father. Yeah. For once. For because once, it was a common yeah. theme throughout the show that they where they were it, just yeah. so negative and so, so, bad, so to bad to each other. But, yeah, and the mom says uh, to Sydney that uh, right before her father killed um, himself, she he thought that he was being stalked. He was being followed. He had paranoia. Exactly, yeah. Yes. And that someone, just like one particular guy was following him. And again, the editing for this was so brilliant. I really loved it. When, as she's going through the events mm-hmm. of how her father felt, you know, the mother telling her daughter how the, the father felt, they kept doing flashbacks to Sydney. Yeah. And what she was experiencing. And so it put the, the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah. And you look at that and go, oh, wow. Okay, he was dealing with the same things his daughter is now dealing with. And it's the whole thing of like, because uh, it's isolation. She thought she was by herself. No one else could uh, relate relate to me. But mm-hmm. now she's not alone, even though her father is gone. Yep. And you, you're almost thinking, God, this could be really dark. You know, she could take this in a really dark way. Be like, oh, my God, my dad's got mental health problems. I probably meant she fucking is ecstatic. Ecstatic that one, she's not crazy. Yes. Well, and that, well, maybe she is a little something, but maybe that she's not uh, actually she's seeing this person it's Mm. a part of the grieving or whatever so she's super fucking happy to find all this out about her dad and she takes the dog takes too now she She does and doesn't her mom say something that he was in some accident where he was the only one that survived so yeah and they couldn't explain it or something yeah so it was a giant explosion it had his comrades his friends his uh all the people in that area and he had a survivor's guilt yes and he was the only one to survive we're gonna find out 100 percent that was he caused that he yep absolutely he caused caused it it. but they were doing some military experiments Mm. or something and he somehow passed that down there yep. which is awesome it's pretty it's cool, story. cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. it's, it's really it's hereditary funny. but in the cool way. oh yeah and awesome yeah. absolutely so that is the end of episode six episode seven man it's deep titled <laughs> deepest darkest secret but man it is just fucking it's a fun episode it's a great episode it's a city's episode. coming out she's on top of the world yep. man she's actually running in gym for the first time she is. broke a sweat maybe the first time in eight years well and she also said that um she was gonna live a positive life positive on from now on yeah no matter what She's not going to let the world bring her down. Yeah, she knows she has this problem, and now that she can accept it, that's the p- first part of healing. Exactly. You know, right? Not the case, Sydney. Really, you do have some crazy supernatural you power. really do. <laughs> that is not just <laughs> mental hallucinations. But, uh, but yeah, basically, Sydney tells uh, Dina that she, what the man she was saying, yeah. it's not really a man. It's just grief. Yep. Super cool. It's not cool. Yeah, it's, it's not just, a real it's guy. Just, no, of course it's not. It's not some real, real guy just... Creeping around the school. I mean, just clearly, possibly a pedophile. It could be, which would be a real scary thing. You'd almost rather have it be this yeah, weird shadow yeah. figure hallucination so, uh, than an actual person. But uh, afterwards, she tells, Sydney tells Dina that her and Stan are not going to homecoming. And Dina says, hey, why don't mean you go to homecoming? Boom, oh. bam, fucking awesome. Crazy. Even after some fucking giant high schooler comes over asking her to go to homecoming. Uh-huh. Don't say no to that guy. No, no, he no, she doesn't. Yeah. I mean, he had a shirt off and everything. I, it's, what the PE guy had like an class? In what high school <laughs> yeah. has an eight, eight pack? pack. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm just like, damn, this, this guy, dude, this guy is jacked. Yeah, like, what school are they going to? Some like weird cold town East Pro- <laughs> where, they're, <laughs> where they're all like yeah. just huge. But uh, yeah, so basically, uh, she says, "Okay, we'll go." Boom, going to the date, best this, friends, right? But Dina, at this point, I started to kind of turn and be like, "Whoa, is Dina?" into her because at this point Dina knows 
unquestionably the Sydney's in. Yeah, and you don't. She has an inkling. And you're right. You never thought of that until this episode. Yeah. Where now you're starting thinking, oh, damn. Maybe she was just, you know, it, the surprise of the kiss was just off-putting to her. Yep. So she didn't get into it. But, uh, but yeah, you start to get those hints or whatever. And yeah, it ends do. up being true later on. Spoiler alert. But she was into it. Oh, she was into she it. She was oh, hell yeah, into it. Yeah. But, uh, She's like, look, I don't understand why we had to make that awkward. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I was just taken back, that's all. But I was definitely into it. Oh, I was down the clown for sure. <laughs> down but, the clown. So, uh, so yeah, they, they're they going to go. and uh, But Brad, this is also a really funny scene. When Brad's talking to Ricky on the, the truck, and Ricky's like, man, we fucking crushed that game. <laughs> yeah, Brad's like, like, Ricky, we lost by 28. <laughs> Yeah, but who cares? <laughs> it's so funny. He had no idea. Not Completely good. unaware they got destroyed in a game that happened an hour ago. Wasn't earlier. the tar- uh, sharpest tool in the shed, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they're getting drunk, But and uh, Brad tells Ricky that uh, go to the dance because it's going to be mind-blowing. Bad mm-hmm. choice of words, Brad. Bad Very choice of words. Very bad choice of words. Uh, but he couldn't have been more funny. right. Could, yeah, not could not have been, have been more, more right. on the nose. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, at the dance... Or it's a cool kind of, you know, prom moment. Mm-hmm. You know, they all they both get ready. Sydney wears a dress for the first time ever, I think. Ever, yeah. So it's really blowing everyone's mind. And, and I got to uh, say, not um, and, and no disrespect to Sydney, but that dress was not a very good dress. Well, you know, it's the fucking hipster kind yeah. of like it came from a thrift store, most likely. Right, yeah. And she was wearing like Doc Martens. But then again, she doesn't wear Yeah, so I mean, that's the whole thing. Often, yeah. So. yeah, she's not a real uh, girly girl, whatever. But, uh, but yeah, so Dina comes, picks her up, and... Uh, Liam gives him the the, the talk, talk, you know, the old talk. You have yeah. to the father talk. And at the very end, he does he throws in the classic. And one more thing, don't forget to have fun. You fucking <laughs> kids, get the hell out of here! Get out, get out of here. here! He's like smoking a cigar. Yeah, putting on a the puzzle couch. together yeah. like he's gonna be there all night <laughs> waiting for them to come home. It's so funny. Oh gosh. But uh, yeah, and they go to the dance. Dance is super cool. Stan's there. I Stan's love, got a weekday. Man, right. she's not. I love those scenes in the car though when he's like. Uh, talking to her about things. He goes, yeah. you got any zits on your thighs? And yeah, she's like, know, trying to relate, Why? trying to be a little unique, you know, but man, yeah. this girl's a real fucking she's wet a blanket. Buzz kill. <laughs> yeah, she's having she was pissed zero, off about the yeah. weed. I'm like, dude, it's hump. Just yeah. smoke. That was funny, though, the, what she talked about, how it's a gateway drug and how eventually yeah. it leads to huffing gasoline. <laughs> huffing gasoline. <laughs> that's the yeah. last part. Yeah. Like, that's she's the like, word. it leads to crack and, yeah. and heroin and, and then gas gasoline sniffing. huff. Gas huffing, yeah. He's like, here's hoping. Yeah, uh, yeah, so he immediately, his day ditches him uh-huh. immediately. But it's kind of cool because before that, uh, Sydney's mom talked about how she met her dad at the dance because she got ditched. Mm-hmm. Now it's a little reverse. Sydney's like her dad. She goes, picks Stan up. Stan admits that they're in love or he's in love. Sydney says, not for me. Not guy. like that. No. Sorry, that the one time yeah. was good enough. But it's cool. You know, they're on good terms now. They're on very good terms. They're on a three way date thing going on at the homecoming. So they they're are. they're all kind Having of dancing. But uh it's a real it's too good of time. Brad comes fucking stumbling and he's got Jaeger spilled on his jacket. Okay. It, we gotta, he smells we gotta, like oh uh, fucking keystones. <laughs> Like he's he comes one in, too many. bullies the fucking teacher. Okay, we got to talk about that. That's what I want to talk about. Where was the supervision at this dance? Where were the chaperones? Well, there was one teacher who was scared shitless. I know, he just took the mic. Give me that. Well, yeah, the thing, man, a kid comes in obviously drunk. This kid is looking. I mean, even as a high schooler, they're grown adults at that point. They're well, 17 yeah, years old. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially someone that plays sports or whatever. Oh, yeah, football. So let's be honest, Brad most likely could have. Killed that fucking uh, guy. He could have. But yeah, he knew he was drunk. So that's it's a really weird moment for a teacher. I mean, you really don't want to put hands on a kid for one, especially drunk. Uh, well, never because it's always worst case scenario, he, sw- he swings yeah. at you and then you swing at him. Mm-hmm. And there you never have a fucking job. So I see a drunk kid. And most Which is so crazy, isn't in it? In my mind, I'm thinking he's going to say something hilarious. <laughs> it's going to be, and then he's going to leave, right? Yeah. He's drunk as hell, but no, not the uh, not really. No, he's a real, um, you know. Yeah, another buzzkill, I yeah. would say. Comes in, starts spouting some horrible shit because he stole Sydney's diary. And this was uh, well set up because she she found out that she was missing her diary like a uh, like an episode or two. I think ago. episode six, right? Yeah. I think right, the last thing at episode six is her looking for her diary and she can't find it. Yeah. And I love the one the one little uh, narration that she goes. She goes, "Dear missing diary." Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so he knows everything. Everything. And uh, right before this, though, Dean and Sydney have a little moment where they, Dean is, talks about. She's like, "Hey, I was down with that fucking kiss." Hi. She's like, "I don't know why you were just so weird about it." 
Well, I got to admit, she was kind of weird about it. She was kind of weird about it, too, yeah. But uh, it's a good moment, and they're right about to kiss again, you think. Yep. But, Until uh, Brad interrupts. Fucking Brad. He just gets up on that stage. Drunk as hell. Oh, my God. Some, someone's got to stop yeah, this kid. Yeah, for sure. But, uh, but yeah, he he never says anything. He talks about how uh, how Sydney likes Dina, likes mm-hmm. like her, and whatever. And then he's right about to expose her. Right about to say, oh, and one more thing. Sydney has well, superpowers. And also, he fucking brought up... Uh, the dad too, like yeah. an asshole. Oh yeah, well like, you knew on. he was going to. It's well, low hanging fruit. I know, but I mean, who, <laughs> yeah. the, who the fuck's gonna like this kid after? Well, he's you drunk make as hell. Fun he's of, like, yeah, yeah, I know exactly. I know. Yeah. Well, I no one's gonna be thinking after this that Brad's fucking a cool, cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no one's a fucking prick. Even in like 1980s Hollywood high school, when everyone fucking loves yeah. the bully, the yeah. the, even in this scenario, I don't think anyone was gonna be like Brad. That was super cool. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. good for you. You know. But uh, yeah, he pretty much says anything, and you're hoping someone is gonna just knock, just him, knock out. him out. I would figure Stan one c- student Stan there, comes up. He does try. Gets <laughs> floored. He get cl- he, he clobbered. Man, I, yeah. I like that they did that because uh, the realistic punch, man. That guy just well, it was dropped good to see, his ass. too that Stan just wouldn't stand there and not do anything. Yeah, and it's good to see that Brad's not just all talk. Yeah, he's he's willing to kill hey, you. It was a pretty good, pretty good punch. Look good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, yeah, so things are getting really bad. Sydney's kind of uh, having one of those attacks. She has those anger attacks where, where everything's the world flashing. Shaking. Yeah. yeah, she's telling him to shut up, shut up, and uh, and then Brad's fucking head explodes. I don't know how else to say it. His head explodes. Explodes. Oh my god! It not like really a little, explode. but a fountain. Oh, and there's blood everywhere. And I'm so glad. And it looks fucking amazing. It looked really good. The body was 100%, I mean, a real practical effect. Because yeah. after it's done, you can see the blood spraying. <laughs> and it's crazy because Dean is like, because after like the flashback of everything, or not the flashback, but everything going on, slow motion, you know, mm-hmm. carry moment. Yep. Everyone's trampling over each other. Um, Sydney runs out of there, but... Uh, Stanley is like slowly waking up because he still has no idea what's <laughs> no, he going on. He's well, waking well, up. Well, I'm well. sure he probably thought that he blew his mm-hmm. head up. But uh, yeah, he wakes up and you see kind of Dina just like a f- in a quick moment. She's just laying in front of uh, Brad, Brad, just yeah. covered in blood. But and, like uh, it's freaking br- out too because yeah. she used to date him and stuff. Yeah. And one other little scene here while Stan peeks over at the dead body. He sees the diary, and he's about to go get it, and someone picked it up. We don't know who. Yeah, well, it looks like it was almost kicked or something like that, but, but you, someone has yeah, it. Someone yeah, someone has it, it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, or it even looks like he's going to go for it. We don't know because it, it, that's the last thing we see, and mm-hmm. it's cut off. And then it's her, which is, and it's her walking through the streets just like fucking, uh, it's definitely a shot-for-shot first... shot remake of, of uh, Carrie, Carrie, and she's yeah, walking sure. out covered in blood. But also, running out, it was the exact same scene from the very first episode of the show. Yeah. Yeah, but when you're watching, if you watch Carrie, you see that first scene, and you're thinking, "Oh, that's like pig's blood." Mm-hmm. So you're really surprised when she's running out of the end, and it's fucking and it's Brad's, Brad's gray blood. matter all over. Her dress. <laughs> oh God! So she ends up running to like uh, the the tower or whatever, some the the, the old tower that they have. That they talked that about Stanley said it, it took a hundred people, to, to... and they died. A hundred men <laughs> died building it. It is the like, shittiest tower. Yeah. Every, every old town has. It's like a coal tower or something like that. I can't remember yeah. what they're for. But yeah, she goes to it and uh, covered in blood, kind of freaking out. And mm-hmm. who peers at the fucking shadows? But the shadow man. The shadow man, of course. We don't know. It he, is his MO. He's got long hair. That's We still have not seen anything. But uh, it's a cool little exchange between her at the end. Because he was like, uh, what does he say? Something about like, uh, she, she goes, are you afraid of? He goes, are you afraid of me or something? She goes, I'm not afraid of you. And she goes, good. And he says something about like, well, now they'll be afraid of you. Yep. And then he goes, let's begin. Like it's a fucking uh, Ben Kenobi uh, training session. They got to go to Dagobah for her to get her powers. <laughs> yeah. in. It's going to be awesome, man. I want in. more. I want another season because I want to see how this goes. I want to so see, I. you know, because you don't know where it's going to go. You know, you have who no is idea. this guy for one? Right. Is he good? Is he bad? We yeah. still don't know. I, I mean, is he going to train her? Is she immediately going to like be like, who the fuck are you? Is it her dad? It could be her dad too. That was something I was thinking. Yeah, it could yeah, absolutely be on the grave. Because we never ever see even a, a, picture, a picture of her. Picture of him, nothing. So we really have no idea what he looks like. And we also know it's a man, so yeah. it could very well be. And we a, know when we father. when she sees him, she's very surprised. Mm-hmm. I mean, she might be just surprised that the guy that she's been thinking following her is real, but she also might be surprised that it's her dad or whatever. Yes. So you really, 
I would be really upset if this fucking ends one season because this obviously was not supposed to only be End a mini series season, or something no. like that. So yeah, I might have to just go and read the comic book. Yeah, you might have to. If they don't out, yeah. have a season two, but they've got to be making a season two for this. I mean, I'm sure it's delayed with the whole coronavirus and stuff, but it, it's a definitely a really, really good show. And it just released February 2026 20, of this year. Yeah. So we'll still, we, we probably won't get it for another year, but definitely something I'd want to watch because I thoroughly enjoyed this. I was just clamoring Loved for it. more yeah. after the end of this. And it's something bite-sized that you can literally binge watch in like uh, two and a half, three hours. It could almost have been a very long movie. Yeah, and it's not, I think maybe it was just marketed weird or something where it was like, but, uh, cause no one is really talking about it. See, no it's, one, it's not, it's not like a, uh, like a, what's that show called on Netflix? Was it River, Riverdale? Riverdale. It's not like a, dra- it's, no, not like it's not a like a teen, teen drama or anything oh, like God, that. No, it's not at all like that. It's a very realistic look of teenage problems, yeah. coming of age story, but it has this awesome element of uh, the supernatural with it. Right. It has great fucking reviews. It does. Great score on Rotten Tomato. Yeah. It's certified fresh at 86%. The audience score is 86%. Uh, with 653 it's user super, ratings. It's super, super well shot. Yes. Like fucking amazingly good. Really good. And the, again, the music is amazing. And the acting's phenomenal too with all the leads. I think she is going to, really I can't wait job. to see her as like an adult and see where her character goes. Sophia Lillis. Because mm-hmm. she's going to be fucking something amazing. I she think. will be. Absolutely. I think she's really close to finding that role where she gets an Oscar nomination. Yeah. She, but she, uh, she hasn't, she doesn't do that much work. Mm-hmm. I mean, not it, yet, but I mean, now she will. I mean, after it, this well, I mean, will even probably it too. be a yeah, success, she, uh, success. She so. does. She's very smart with the role she picks, though, for sure. I mean, she. I think she has a good manager or just good parents that are picking good because you should go back and watch the mini series she's in. It's super good too. Uh, what what was that? Sharp objects. Sharp objects. It's really dark. It's a thriller. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see if she's got anything in the works. So, uh, Gretel and Hansel 2020. Oh, and that was bad. It was bad? It was bad. Really I just watched that. Yeah. Okay. I forgot she was in that. You see Uncle Frank? I haven't seen that. Okay, so... That might in, not be out yet. No. Pre-production, we have two things. The Thicket, that sounds like a horror film, and The Burning Season. Ooh, The Burning Season. Potentially both horror films. <laughs> Maybe she's a scream queen. The Burning Season, like yeah. Like Samara. Well, she's been in only dark things. Yeah. Good point. You gotta think about it. She's yeah. only been in dark. Sharp Objects is really dark. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm interested. Absolutely. And uh, Wyatt Olaf, too. He's fucking great. Any he's any of those really kids good. from fucking, I mean, I don't know. It's like a renaissance of child actors right now with the Stranger Things, all those kids blowing up, yep. and then those it kids in them as well. So it's, When even uh, Timothy Chalamet. I mean, I know he's older yeah. now. But he was younger but when he, he got was started. Younger, yeah. yeah, when he got started. And he's he's phenomenal. I think maybe so. they're just starting to take child actors more serious nowadays mm-hmm. with this. Stuff. Well, and that's and that's the thing too. I mean, if you got the money to get your kids an acting class, and the like kids are good as an really actor, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, it's a very yeah, it's a very expensive endeavor. Yeah, it's very for expensive. for the parent. Yeah, yeah, for anyone, you know. Yeah. And you, one of your parents almost has to it has to make it, it like their full full-time time job. Yeah, and no, it is full yeah. time, absolutely. Well, unless you got like and everything else. money for a maid or a nanny, and, shit. <laughs> and then like, you just then got it doesn't have to be, money full, have to be full yeah. time. You're, you end up putting you can do your own shit and never kid. see your kid for a yeah, year, and they'd be true. fine. Yeah, but uh, all right, that is our part two of, of I, I am not, not okay, okay with this. this. If you haven't watched yeah. it yet, highly recommend. As do I. You can watch it. I mean, you can watch any show, any one season a day, but this one you can watch it. I think three and a half hour, three and a half hours. Yeah, is the runtime. For Seven the episodes, thing. about 20, 25 minutes a piece. Really, yeah, it's easy. around three hours. Yeah, so but, uh, uh, recommend it. Absolutely. So do I. Uh, and this this should probably be talked about more too. I'm, I'm shocked it hasn't been. Yeah, to the level of it, it should maybe even be uh, an Emmy nominated or something because the acting is so well done, yeah. especially that of the mother. The mother does a really good job. Yes. We barely even talked about her. I know. For the scenes that she she was in, she she actually crushed yeah. as well. So, I don't it's, know. We'll see. It's a sad show. No, it's not going to get nominated. For one, they don't even like it. They're barely nominating the things now that go on Netflix. They mm-hmm. still don't have a problem <laughs> with that. So, I mean, it's Ozark's got it, but not a lot of Netflix shows are still no. getting it. 
But, All righty. Uh, well, that is our uh, TV Tuesday conclusion of I am not okay with this. If you guys like what you see here, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to like this video, comment below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification for all the latest updates. Uh, also, if you guys are listening on podcast uh, format, Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and Stitcher, we are everywhere. My name is Mason Knight. That is Cash Krause, and until next time. Bye. Bye.